I'm Clark County Poet Laureate Angela M. Brommel, and today we're talking with our third Clark County Poet Laureate, Heather Lane Casera. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. It's so good to see you. You know, you have been doing some amazing public art, and as you know, like part of my program has been about poetry for resilience, which ties into some things that you did. Um, some of it has been in my program has been talking with people about interdisciplinary arts practices, other things they do, the relationship between writing and visual art, things like that. And I think that's why I have been so excited to watch the things that you're making. So I wanted to know, can you catch us up a little bit with um, your book publications and your artwork since then? Absolutely. So um, I think I will start with, I'm very excited because I do have a forthcoming book with Unsolicited Press. It is titled Firefall. Okay. And it touches on a lot of aspects of nature, um, some eco poetry. A lot of it is steeped in the desert, but it moves beyond that and, you know, thinks about the ocean and how the desert was once an ocean. And uh, so I'm really honored to have that book forthcoming. Uh, it is also, the writing of it was supported by the Nevada Arts Council and the National Endowment for the Arts through a Nevada Arts Council project grant. And so I'm just so deeply grateful for that support that has helped me, like, you know, carve out the time and the Wonderful. space. Yeah, so I'm really excited about that. Um, I do have a micro chat book also coming out with Rinky Dink Press soon. And that includes some of those poems, and um, they just do some phenomenal work. They are over in Arizona, so I kind of always think of Arizona. Is that Rosemary? It is, it is. Yeah, Rosemary Drombowski, okay. who was um, the Poet Laureate of Phoenix for a while. So incredible work, and um, her team, like Shante O'Ryan, and the entire team's just amazing. So um, I'm so grateful for our, our art community, um, including our poetry community. And as you can see, um, a lot of my poetry is really informed by the visual art that I've been doing as well. Yeah. And so uh, I've really fallen in love with ceramics. And so, How did this start? <laughs> so I started taking classes over at Clay Arts Vegas and the folks over there, um, Peter and Tom are just phenomenal. But I found that being able to work in kind of two different mediums, so, you know, writing and then also right. pottery, there's something about it that really informs one another for me. And so I'll be thinking about, like, lines and images and textures and cadence while I'm, you know, sitting and throwing something or hand-building something. And then also the movement that comes out of what I am making with my hands absolutely finds its way into poetry as well. So for me, it's been really fun to witness the ways in which they um, play together or inform each other or end up in conversation with one another. One of the things I love about that is I think, and you know from teaching too, um, a lot of times I tell our students that we tend to think of artists as visual artists and then writers are writers. But you know, historically there were times where you know, artists were doing whatever it took to pay the bills. So they might be newspaper reporters while they're also poets, but they're also actors on the stage. Maybe they're making visual art. And I think we have a number of local poets who um, maybe have been visual artists in the past or still make work. And so uh, I think everyone has been excited to see this and understands what you're talking about. But I think that's exciting to share with the, the public to say, on the flip side, if you're a visual artist, like please come to poetry classes yes. and workshops because you have this visual language and you have description for texture and other things like that. Absolutely, and it's really fun to see the ways in which I can infuse my poetry into descriptions of my visual art. Mm -hmm. So sometimes visual artists share with me that they don't necessarily love writing the descriptions of their work oh. or that they can find it yeah. a little bit nerve wracking, you know? And for me, it's really, really fun because it feels like poetry. Yeah. <laughs> so I totally get that. Yeah. Um, I, you brought some work today to share with us? I did, I absolutely did. So I chose a poem that feels like it's in conversation with the fish that I have here today. Um, so these fish were part of a larger stacked art piece that was part of a temporary art installation over at Clark County Wetlands, um, their rooted exhibition. And so um, I wanted to bring something that felt like it was, you know, in conversation with that. And so I brought the closing poem from my forthcoming collection, Firefall. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks for the opportunity to read. Wanting water. 
Here is where I return to when I am feeling without you. When object permanence fails me, when the ocean perch within my chest turns into a ruby-throated hummingbird, and then back into a fish out of water yet again, all without ever being seen. But in the end, everything is hidden from at least somebody. It is Pisces season. What we let go can be written down and then burned and then instead of buried, lost within the moon water, which was made by abandoning open-mouthed vessels beneath this late night light. This time, under this terrestrial body, it can only be the small things that we let go. When we were young, you would look up asking to be held. Would our mother empty her vacant pockets pulling them inside out, as if ebbing like tidal flow, as if each denim basin could be an entire sea, only to say no, to say she had nothing more to offer. What does it mean that I am so much older than you were when you died? Why can I no longer remember the shape of you, sister, when you would swim. You know, I've, I heard this when it was first starting. You know, I've heard this in workshops. You helped me workshop it, exactly. Yeah, Thank yeah. you so much for and, your feedback. And so I, I mean, I didn't even remember what I said then. I've always thought it was beautiful and how you pull it together. And of course, I remember the stories from your first chat book. Yes. So um, that's one of the things I love about chat books and longer books is that we start to get the mythology of, of the writer. You know, yeah. that world I, building. Absolutely. And I really should mention that too. So my first book, I Was the Girl with the Moon-Shaped Face, was yeah. published by Zeitgeist Press, which is Bruce Isaacson's press. Right. So our first, right. you know, poet right. laureate. And so it's just another example of how incredibly yeah. supportive yeah. our poetry community is. So wonderful. So what I would like to do is um, in the next six months, in my last six months, uh, we're going to be doing more workshops, more readings, and things like that. Beautiful. And so I would like to be in touch with you to maybe talk more about this and invite people to come learn about these experiences from you. I love the idea of saying, like, come on, and we'll make your art tags more poetry, and, and you I help love us that. the visual. That'd but thank so you so much for coming out. And for everyone at home, um, uh, please check out Heather's books. If you're shopping locally, they're at the Writer's Block. You can also find them online through the publishers and other people. You can keep up with where Heather is going uh, from her website. And for Clark County Poet Laureate events, you can check the county page. We also have a Facebook group called Clark County Poet Laureate Community.